This is my friend Parth. Last year he did not get his H1B visa and he had two options. Either he could go for the D1 CPT or he could move back to India. He chose for the first one. Why? Because first of all he didn't qualify for O1 or EB1 visa. That was out of the question. He didn't want to move back to India. He wanted an option where he get two more tries after three tries he already had for H1B visa. There's no limit how many times you can put your name in the law. Let me tell you everything you need to know about day one CPD from questions like can I travel to India to what kind of documents I would require and what does the process really looks like. Let's start whether day one CPD is a good option for you or not. Day one CPD is a great option for you if this was your last try on H1B. You don't qualify for O1 or you don't qualify for EB1. Uh, you only had OPT one year. You didn't have any STEM extension because maybe your course was non-STEM course and you want to stay in the US for long term. Day one CPT is not a good option for you if you want to go back to India. If you're in the second year of your STEM, uh, so you still have one more try to go and you're planning to move to India regardless, then it's not a good option at all. Whether it's legal or not, let's answer that. It is completely legal. USCIS has information on their websites that international students uh, can do and can enroll in one of these programs. Students who come to India directly, they cannot be enrolled in these kind of programs because USCIS still requires you to finish two semesters before you're able to work. Now, since you have already done a degree in the US, a master's degree, you're able to get this day one CPT program um, because you already have two semesters of education there. And now what you're doing is you're only doing another degree with working along with the executive masters or executive MBA, so as to say. There's a lot of confusion on what all universities are available when it comes to day one CPD. This is a map which explains really well what universities are available. Um, I know you might be sketched out like, hey, I don't know whether this university is good or not. I'm gonna tell you every way possible to figure out that. Uh, all of these universities, like I know people who's at Humphreys University, I know somebody at New England College, I know somebody at Trine, I need know somebody at Harrisburg University. All of these universities are great, but what you can do is I'm going to share a link in the description below. It's a SCVP registration portal. And what you can do is you can search yourself. Um, let's go to that link and look for ourselves right now. This is the Homeland Security website to tell you what school is legal and what is not. So if you are looking to enroll yourself in a day one CPT program, this is uh, the website you should go to. Let's look at uh, Trine University. That's what we were looking at. And let's also select F1 visa right here. As you can see, Trine University can actually take F1. They have all of these campuses. So you can go to their website and look, start looking for their executive program. Same thing with New England College. Let's look at it. Same thing with New England Colleges. There's uh, multiple campuses, but um, my, one of my friends has been enrolled into their uh, New Hampshire one. Uh, and as you can see, F1 is allowed it. Uh, it will also depend on where the course you're looking for is there. Usually all of the students, all of the international students who are enrolled in A1 CPT um, are enrolled in one of the same campuses. Um, are these colleges legit? Yes, absolutely. Do these colleges give assignments and exams? Yes, absolutely. Uh, there are students who do pay third party to get all of their assignments done. I do not recommend that at all. I recommend you go through uh, the assignments yourself because when you're coming, when you're you know traveling, let's say, and the custom border patrol officer asks you, like, hey, what are you studying? What are you doing? Tell me some of the courses. You need to know, you need to make sure that you know what kind of courses you're going through right now. What is the curriculum for that? And it's also a good practice. Why are you spending so much money for an MBA degree if you're not getting anything out of it? That is my belief. Let's say you have selected one of those universities, doesn't matter which one, you have selected one of those, you go through the program and curriculum. You go through, let's say you want to go to a data analytics program, you want to go to a data science program, you want to go through an MBA program, you look through it, re reach out to them, see when their batches start. This is very, very important because let's say you didn't get your H1B and your OPT or your STEM extension is only valid until June. You need to make sure you're enrolling in that college beforehand. 
Here's a timeline which I share with everyone. In April, you would know whether you got H-1B or not. In May, June, whenever your EAD is expiring, let's say your EAD expires in June or July, you need to make sure you're applying for day one CPT program one month beforehand. What are the next steps for you to apply? You have figured out what the day one CPT program is. You have figured out that I need to go that route. Third thing you need to do is you need to talk to your legal team. Uh, every corporate office here has a legal counsel. Uh, it could be an immigration firm. You need to talk to them. You need to figure out with them what are the next steps. Will they allow you to do day one CPD? Some of the companies are more open than the others. So your duty right now is to have that conversation ongoing. Once you have that conversation, once you start the process of enrolling yourself into day one CPD, figure out the fees. Do you have enough money to pay? Because the fees is not going to be cheap. It could be anywhere from $15,000 to $20,000 in one year. Even though you're working, that's a lot of money. So figure that fees out and see if you can spend that. The next thing you need to do is once you're enrolling, what they will ask you to do is they will ask you to do a service transfer. Service is you get a service ID with your first wind, I-20. Uh, when you're going through your OPT and STEM extension, the service ID is with your current college. So let's say I graduated from Purdue University. My service ID was with Purdue University until my OPT was over. Let's say I'm enrolling into a new college in the US. I still need to have that service ID with me because it's associated with me. They need to make that transfer. While you're enrolling, and let's say you have enrolled in the college and your course starts by May 15th, um, you need to make sure that that service ID gets transferred to your new college, to your day one CBT program. And of course, the day one CBT universities, they don't call it that, but these universities will make sure that process happens. While you're doing the service transfer, you cannot be on payroll. There is two things I would recommend you to check with your legal counsel whether you can be on payroll or not. If you don't have to be in payroll, they can lay you off for one week and hire you again. Um, if you can be on payroll, you can be on PTO and that works as well. Your legal immigration counsel and your HR will be able to help you with that. Again, depends and varies companies to company. Once the service transfer is completed, so let's say I'm from Purdue and I'm going to New England College, my service has been transferred to New England. What New England is going to do is issue a new I-20 to me. When they issue the new I-20, then I can start working again. That's completely fine. These are the few things you would need to enroll yourself in the day one CPT. You make sure you have your passport, you have your I-20. You do not need a EAD. Remember when you had OPT, you had to apply for EAD. When you had STEM extension, you had to apply for a EAD. You don't have to do that. You do need a job which is related to your field if you're planning to do another master's. It needs to be associated a little bit. Let's say I'm doing a construction management degree, MBA or data analytics, any kind of MBA, I, any kind of master's I would do will be kind of associated with it and you can prove that case. Usually when people who enroll themselves in day one CPT and when they are going through H1B, they may or may not get a RFE. RFE stands for request for evidence. Request for evidence is when you have to prove and provide a bunch of documents that, hey, I'm enrolled in this university and it's completely legit. I'm actually working, I'm going through course and curriculum and it act, it matches uh, the degree I did initially or it matches the work I'm doing. You, you don't have to answer the RFE yourself. Your legal immigration team is going to help you do that. Now, the big question comes in whether you are able to travel to India or not. Let me answer that question for once and all. Yes, you can travel to India, but you need to make sure that you have, first of all, a valid F1 visa. If you don't have a valid F1 visa, then what will happen is that you'll have to go to India, you'll have to either go through Dropbox or you have to go through the interview procedure to get a new stamp. If you don't have a valid F1 visa, I would not recommend you to travel while you're on day one CPT. Let's say you do have a valid F1 visa, then you should travel uh, on day one CPT. But one thing which, you know, my friend has told me uh, one thing which I found out in all of this research is that when you're coming back from India, the custom officer and the immigration officer in India at the ticketing counter in the US, when anybody asks what is the intent of your travel, you need to make sure you say study. You need to make sure that you say I'm a student 
and I'm you don't need to say that you know my intent of travel is work because what will happen you're currently on F1 visa you're going through day one CPT then how are you a working profession it's it conflicts directly so you need to make sure that you tell them I am a student and I am going there to study and then if they ask you more questions you can answer but I tell everybody that hey any kind of immigration question make sure that you are very succinct you're very brief with your answer you don't have to give them long answers you tell them exactly what they asked for and they will be good to go I'm gonna leave all of the links which I've mentioned in the video in the description below and please comment below what questions you have regarding Dave and CPT or what the confusion is about see you later